Eric Messerschmidt is uh, an Emmy nominee for Best Cinematography for his work on the Netflix series Mindhunter, uh, specifically episode six, uh, which includes the search for missing children in Atlanta, uh, as well as uh, an intense prison interview scene with uh, killer Paul Bateson. Uh, so, so what about that particular episode stood out for you uh, as an example of your work? Well, I, I think, you know, the whole season we're, um, we're sort of, you know, going towards this, this, this moment, um, I mean, obviously there's a story climax of, of them zeroing in on Wayne Williams. And um, I, I felt like episode six in particular is a really good example of what we were trying to do entirely with the show, you know, um, from a visual standpoint, but also from a story standpoint, uh, it, it is, is kind of the beginning of the climax of the season. Um, and it's, it's where we really start to put a lot of the pieces together. And I, I just felt like we had a lot of variety in the episode. Um, you know, you have all of the classic Mindhunter uh, stuff with the Paul Bateson interview, um, but, but you also have the, uh, the, the characters out in the field, you know, so we're, we're expanding the scope a little bit. Um, and, uh, and we had some new set pieces, which the audience hasn't, hadn't seen before. So it was, it was a good opportunity to, to show a little bit of the depth of the show. Um, and it was, you know, an episode we were generally pretty proud of. Uh, and since the show uh, that uh, set in the second season explored the Atlanta child murders, uh, which was a different locale than we'd seen in season one, what, was, uh, was a lot of it shot on location or, or were you sort of creating that uh, in different locations? We, yeah, so we had, um, for most of the season, at least the second half of the season, our characters are, are in Atlanta. So, uh, you know, we felt like Atlanta was kind of this, it, especially in the summer, is this kind of hot, sticky environment. And we, we were shooting in Western Pennsylvania for Atlanta. We didn't shoot in Atlanta. So, um, you know, we wanted it to feel as much like we all remember Atlanta as being um, as possible. So, you know, we used, uh, we, we, we warmed the camera up quite a bit. Um, we made use of the atmosphere and some of the interiors. Uh, you know, we tried to, I tried to light it with as much kind of hot searing sunlight coming through the doors as possible. It's just kind of spoke to me for what Atlanta is like when I'm there, you know. Um. Uh, yeah, one of the things that struck me was how well the show kind of captures that, that feeling, as you said, the kind of the sticky, humid kind of sense of, of place. Like you'll see on the costumes also, the like sweat under the arms of the suits and like, uh, it's, it's really effective. Was it very different experience trying to create that atmosphere versus uh, the, the locations and, and settings uh, from season one? Well, I think, you know, you always take location into consideration, of course, when, when you're approaching something and uh, this is no different. Um, you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the scenes in the first season and the beginning of the second season are in institutions where they're predominantly, uh, you know, overhead, institutionally lit, uh, you know, or they're lit from windows and it's, you know, relatively kind of mundane and simple. Um, and, and that's by design because that's kind of what those spaces are like, you know. Um, so, you know, when we get out into the real world, we have to be, you know, it has to be contextual. So, I mean, that's where that comes from. Um, but yeah, absolutely. It's fun to, to play and, and explore and think about that stuff, um, uh, you know, when we're, when we're doing the work. And one of the things I think carries over uh, in both seasons is, you know, as you mentioned, a lot of the show takes place in, in these interiors, um, these institutions, uh, but the show also manages to make those very eerie, very kind of unsettling in their own way. Um, like the Paul Bateson interview has this very stark overhead lamp. Uh, like, What's it like creating that atmosphere and making it as evocative as, as possible, given that you know, a lot of times it's, it's characters in rooms talking to each other. Well, um, I mean, that's the great, that's the great joy in what I get to do for a living. And, you know, what cinematographers get to do, um, is, is find the moments and, and find the, uh, find the aesthetic direction of the show, you know, um, and, you know, we, we can take some license in how we, t and how we tell the story and, and, I think the audience expects it, and, and I think the material uh, uh, dictates it. So, you know, in those situations, we, and certainly in the Paul Bateson interview, uh, uh, you know, that 
that very strong overhead fluorescent. Um, we're, you know, we're taking a little creative license there because what's being discussed in the, in the scene is so intense. Um, and, uh, you know, trying to support the story without drawing too much attention to photography. And uh, you mentioned uh, sort of the, the scenes on the field, uh, out in the field, um, and this episode in particular, uh, you have uh, Holden and, and, and Tench, um, they, they're searching for these missing children. Uh, you have these, uh, you know, low light kind of night shots or pre-dawn shots uh, uh, that are really uh, tense and evocative and, and you know, one scene they find bodies and that scene is so intensely lit by flashlights. Um, like, what was it like, like, what was the, what were the challenges going to, especially low, very low light scenes like that to make them uh, deliver what you want, but still be kind of distinguishable and clear and, and what you want the scene to say? Well, you know, I think it's, it's become, it's become very much in vogue lately to be really dark. Uh, and, and that is certainly, fun for a cinematographer to kind of see what you can get away with. I, you know, I, I, I don't really, I'm not so into that anymore. You know, I once was, I was really into that, but, but I think, um, you know, the show is, is moody, uh, when it's appropriate and it's, uh, and, you know, and it, it, it goes for that, but it really comes from, uh, hopefully from a, from a point of realism and from, you know, what are these spaces? So for example, when they're out in the woods, searching for bodies, um, they're using flashlights, you know, and they are, that, that is the strongest light source in the environment. And that, you know, that's because that's what it would be. So we're always trying to look back towards realism and, and, and gravitate towards it and then add a little bit of stylistic flair, you know, um, when it's appropriate, but again, really trying to be as nuanced and, and quiet about it as possible because we don't want to be flashy. You know? I mean, the last thing we want to do is draw, attention, uh, the audience's attention away from the story, you know? Um, so it's a, it's a little bit of a balancing act, I think, but, um, you know, that's, that's sort of, that's, that's the job, I guess, you know? Uh, and, and yeah, an additional layer on this episode um, and throughout the season uh, was the story of, of Tench's son who is involved in, in the death of a toddler and, and he's you know, going through that emotional trauma. And so you have these household scenes also that themselves have attention to them where, you know, sort of, you know, should be what should feel like home feels also kind of uh, imposing and intimidating. Uh, what was it like uh, shooting uh, like those those sort of household scenes that are not as welcoming as as people would think of a home being at that particular? Sure. Well, I think you know we're tr we're trying to acknowledge that there's there's always a little bit you know everyone has skeletons in the closet. There's always a little bit of uh, you know undiscussed family drama in every family, and and uh, you know Bill Tench's family is is obviously. Um, uh, a really good example, of, uh, uh, an extreme example of that. Um, and, you know, a little bit of peeling back, peeling back the curtain and revealing that to the audience and, and, and reminding everyone that, you know, this, what, what Bill Tench is experiencing at work um, has the potential to touch everybody, you know? Um, so we, you know, we try to approach it again, uh, from a very straightforward, objective way of, uh, you know, letting the audience be somewhat of a fly on the wall and observe what's going on and not, not using a lot of point of view um, and, and really letting his family life unfold in front of us. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's moody when it's, when, when it has times, I mean, there's a, you know, there's a scene, I think in the, uh, in the seventh episode where uh, 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 Bill's wife, um, Nancy's announcing that she's gonna she's gonna go shopping and she's gonna leave and it's this, it's a wonder that that we put together and it's you know it's very kind of creepy and um, and minimal uh, and you know we're just always looking for those moments to to bring a little bit a little bit of emotion back into the show because the show is you know it's it's there's procedural aspects to what they're doing as agents so so when we get the opportunity to glimpse back and look at their lives it's, you know it's it's kind of fun to play. In that in that space, and uh, the show uh, feels very much uh, in the spirit of, of David Fincher's a lot of his previous work, and of course he's a producer and directs a lot of the episodes. Uh, what is that collaboration like? You know, from you know one season to the next, just developing the tone and feel. 
uh, well, I mean, working with David is fantastic. It's a dream, you know. It's um, he, he's he's very specific about what he wants, um, but he's also incredibly collaborative and and curious about the world, you know. And and he's a student of cinema, and he uh, knows exactly how he wants to approach everything. And and we kind of, you know, so we we throw ideas back and forth, and we talk about uh, references and visual references and uh, what we think might work or not work for a specific scene. And, and he is, you know, he's really good with the guest directors in, in helping them consider the tone of the show and the stylistic approach of the show. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, uh, every day I get to spend on the set with David is a, is a total joy. You know, it's, um, I, I love working with him. Uh, and you uh, got to work with him uh, again on on the film Mank, uh, which you are uh, the cinematographer of, um, which is of course, uh, or at least it seems on paper like a very different kind of uh, story and milieu. The you know screenwriter Herman Mankiewicz uh, versus uh, FBI agents under these circumstances. Uh, how is that experience different? Oh well, I mean every you know every project is different. Every project has different challenges and different. Um, different storytelling needs, you know, uh, I don't want to talk too much about Mank because it's, it's, uh, it's yet to be released, but it, you know, the movie is black and white and, uh, it's period film. And, and so, you know, it, it brings with it all of those, um, all of those filmmaking decisions that, that, you know, that are, you know, that's, what's great about our job is we get to sort of pick a story apart and figure out what we're going to do and how we're going to tell the story. You know, my, I mean, Mindhunter is, um, is definitely a very specific thing and, and David you know brings his sensibility to every project and he absolutely has a has a signature you know and um you know, it's the cinematographer's job I think to kind of to to approach every project through the director's lens and and figure out um how it is they want to tell their story and support it the best way you can you know so uh, every project is different and, and Mank is absolutely an example of that it's very different it's a very different film um for him, uh, you know, and he's, he's, uh, he's, you know, he's telling it um, as it should be told. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, the Emmy nomination for the show uh, for Mindhunter is, uh, you know, potentially a little bittersweet because the show is on uh, sort of on hold or on a definite, indefinite hold uh, as it was announced. Um, do you hold out hope for revisiting that world in, in the future uh, if, if the opportunity should come around? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I loved working on the show. We had an amazing experience with a fantastic crew, really great cast. Um, you know, it's sort of one of those unique, it's a unicorn in a way, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it was really unique situation where everybody was working towards the same goal and everyone was very in, in sync in terms of what we were trying to accomplish. And, um, you know, a lot of that comes from really great leadership from the top and support, you know, but, um, yeah, I, uh, you know, I would love to go back and, and do more Mindhunter, but, you know, who knows? Time will tell, I guess. Uh, well, uh, I want to congratulate you on your Emmy nomination for the show. Um, best of luck on that in September uh, and on Mank when it comes out uh, later this year. Uh, and thank you so much for talking to me today. Oh, it's my pleasure. Yeah, of course. Anytime.